The origins of uh, this boat Nader, um, it's based on a Pinky Ketch. And the Pinky Ketch was a fishing boat of around mid 19th century from Eastern Seaboard, so Nova Scotia area. And they were fishing boats, they went out into the, into the North Atlantic, fishing for cod and another fish. And they were primarily crewed by a skipper and a boy. And they would go out for several days and the fish were actually kept in a wet hold. So the bottom of the boat was, was wet, it was full of seawater. And they keep the live fish in the boat until they got back to port. And the crew, or the two, the two crew, would, would actually live in the forecastle, which was a raised uh, floor, uh, and they would cook on an open fire in order to um, get their, I suppose they cook fish probably, and they would be out for several days. And the, the Pinky Ketch was considered a very uh, seaworthy uh, boat, very able to take sea, uh, quite speedy for a time, uh, very beamy, she has a beam of 11 foot, and the sizes would range from about 30 foot up to about 50 foot. Some were schooner rigged, uh, some were catch rigged, and the idea really was to, to make the sail easier to manage by a small crew. As far as I know, there are no other pinky catches of this design built at the moment, although I do know the designer has sold several sets of plans. So the, the reason I wanted a design of this type was my aspirations when I was in my middle age was to to do some serious ocean cruising. So I wanted a, a boat which was very stable, very safe, uh, able to look after me when I wasn't perhaps able to look after the boat, and uh, have a proven design which I knew would, would be safe. Also big enough to be comfortable, but small enough to be able to handle by one person if I wanted to go single-handed. I, I do sell single-handed quite a bit. So I plumped for this design which was uh, double-end or uh, pointed stern as some people call it and uh, chance meeting with uh, the name dropping here Robin Knott Johnson one day confirmed that this was what I really needed to do if I wanted to do some serious sailing so the design was drawn up for me by Paul Fisher uh, Sailway Fisher design I had the drawings for many years before I actually started on the build in fact I had them for I think almost 10 years and every year I'd get the drawings out, look at them, think, no, this is too big a job, I'm not ready for this, put it away again. Eventually I got round in, in 1999 to actually commencing the building of Nader. Nader is quite unique. This is the only one in the UK built from this specific design. She's 35 and a half foot on the deck. Uh, she has a waterline length of 28. Her beam, she's quite beamy, she's 11 foot beam. She draws uh, five and a half feet. Uh, her, her tonnage, she's weighing in at ten and a half metric tons so she's quite a heavy boat uh, heavy displacement 40 percent displacement the keel is over four tons so i started building nader in 1999 and i had to start by putting up a shed i needed a shed big enough next to my workshop back of my garden and the timber i'd already actually sourced because in 1987 the great storm of 87 and uh, i live on a private estate a farm there and a lot of trees came down, a uh, good opportunity suddenly to collect a lot of timber because it was very cheap. So I bought up a, a lot of the windfall timber, oak, um, ash, uh, cedar, uh, one or two other timbers. Uh, so that was the start of Nader. So the actual start was in 87 with the seasoning, cutting and seasoning of the timber. So all, virtually all the timber that went into building Nader has come from within a mile of where she was built, which again makes her unique. And the project went on for a long time, a, a lot longer than I'd ever envisaged. I was thinking maybe I'd get the job done in four or five years when I was completely naive and unrealistic. It actually took 12 years to get it finished. And the nearer I thought I got to having it finished, the further it seemed to be away because the jobs got more and more and more. So it was a very long project, went on for I'd say 12 years, right up until uh, uh, 2011 when she was launched in the River Thames, which is quite close to where I live. That was quite an operation to get into the river. It was quite a thing in itself. Uh, so we launched in the Thames and motored down, bit by bit, down to London, and where we rigged her up. So in the uh, Easter of 2011, we, we, we had a big launching party uh, where she was built, just half a mile from where she was built, into River Thames, quite an epic uh, day with huge crane and lots of people. Uh, big celebration, uh, all the family came down, friends, relatives, and the designer who was there. 
uh, my mother who was almost 90 and uh, we launched Nader into the river uh, we left her there for a week or two a few jobs to deal with on the farm and then we took her down the river Thames she was de-rigged we had all the masts and spars on the, on the deck and we got all the way down to Greenwich with some difficulty because the river was quite low uh, we had to run aground quite a few times uh, locks were quite difficult to negotiate eventually got her down to Greenwich we rigged her in Greenwich and then from Greenwich we sailed well, gradually, bit by bit, not in one go, but we sailed over a period of time, uh, all the way down to the Isles of Scilly, uh, to the, the birthplace of her namesake, Nader. And we had a lovely holiday there, fantastic weather, sailed back. So that was her, her maiden voyage, really, down to the Isles of Scilly, and very, very pleasant it was, too. She behaved perfectly. Um, there was no problems, particularly two teething things, of course, but she, she sailed very well, I was quite happy with her. And uh, we're now back in, uh, in Portsmouth, near Portsmouth, where she's based at the moment. And uh, mostly sailing around the Solent and, and beyond, uh, hoping to do larger voyages at some point in the future. But a lot depends on various factors. And uh, very, very pleased to be here at Wicker. It's a very good place to keep a boat. Um, so uh, a lot of people, I'm sure, are interested to know how Nader sails. And of course, that's one of my uh, main criteria really with Nader was that she would be capable of being sailed single-handed and indeed I do go out quite a bit on my own and I enjoy taking crew as well but uh, she's easy to handle on her own because of the mizzen sail I can get her up into wind, she'll lie to wind, um, head to wind I can get the sails up and because we've got various sails different combinations there's a range of different gear ratios if you like for different wind conditions she sailed to spec, so she sailed to her design uh, hull speed, which is 6.8 knots, I think. Uh, she's actually gone beyond that uh, into low sevens. Uh, very comfortable to sail, uh, wonderful in a, in a seaway. Um, a little bit slow in light wind because she's heavy, she's 10 and a half ton, so not quite enough canvas to drive her well below force three. But force three onwards, she, she sails beautifully. A bit of weather help, which you expect, uh, which increases as the wind goes up which time I drop the mizzen, uh, start reefing at top end of force four to five, depending on the direction of wind, uh, but she's comfortable, never ever taking heavy seas, she's, she rides the sea very well, so I'm, I'm happy with the way she sounds. There's always things you want to tweak, there's little features I'd like to improve, but generally speaking I'm, I'm very satisfied with the way she sails. There's a lot of doors on there, in fact there's 103 doors in total, and uh, the whole project was becoming quite expensive and building boats, as everyone knows, is not cheap. But over a period of time, over the 12 years, I was spending average amounts of money. In fact, in the total 12-year build, I ended up spending £60,000 on this boat, which sounds to me like a lot of money, but because it was over 12 years, it wasn't too bad. When we got near launch date, we'd run out of money. We had no money, and we had to find uh, a grand or two to get the boat launched with big cranes and equipment and no loaders so my wife came out with a brilliant idea well I wasn't too sure it was brilliant at the time but it turned out to be a very good idea the doors she decided would be worth uh, finding people to sponsor a door to get their name on the back of a door so we designated certain doors and people could choose a small a medium or a large we got some people we got couples where they had two doors together and we've, uh, we've got the name on the back of the doors. So the boat contains a, a social history, really, about people which I met as a result of building this boat, and people connected to me through family or friends or through business, uh, dotted around the boat. So there's a history, if you like, of, of the people involved in, in part, partly involved in this project. 